I'm Steve Thompson. I'm president and owner of uh, Emory Thompson Machine. Uh, we are the largest manufacturer of batch freezers in the world, and yet we're a, a very family business. Jeff, hobbling around Jeff, come on over Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Markow, many of you already know him, has uh, a fantastic ice cream parlor. Good to see you. Good to see you. Mystic Ice Cream and Ices. And um, he's up in uh, Fruit Loops, Florida, uh, right next to a retirement community. And what a great business he has um, for a liberal. He is just a fantastic teacher. He knows an awful lot about ice cream. Real quick, I'll just show you a couple of things. Uh, when we get into Italian ices later, I'll show you this. This is an invention of mine. It seems very simple, called the Rainbow Ice Maker. And uh, kids like Superman Italian ice. And unless you're a big commercial operation, with a million dollar machine, uh, the way to make rainbow Italian ice is this divider, which um, the rainbow ice maker, you make lemon. It's, say you had four of these dividers. You'd make a batch of lemon and fill up the lemon side, put it in the freezer. Then you'd make the cherry side and fill up the four and then put it in the freezer. And then the blue ice you would make, uh, blueberry. And then when it's all done and it's all in the freezer, then you pull it out. Now you've got three flavors and you scoop in a semicircular motion. And um, people used to do this with cardboard, but cardboard attracts bugs and it's a one-time deal and it's really unsanitary. This is all uh, heavy stainless steel. I just came up with a new one. You're the first per people to see it. A lot of people said we want to make two flavor ice cream or two flavor Italian ice, not three flavor. So my vice president, I, I designed it and then my vice president uh, named it. We call this the Great Divide. And um, it just divides the tub in two. Uh, it can also be used for serving hors d'oeuvres. Uh, it can be used as a cutting board. It has a lot of uses, but when you're making two flavors, it's just that simple. And so we have those and um, that's made a lot of advances for people doing ices so they can do different flavors. So I'll clean out Jeff's machine. While he gets ready. What? You want me to rinse it out? Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Which brand of plastic containers do your dividers make? Good. Uh, do what? Do the dividers, which brand plastic Oh, okay. Steve can answer that. The, um, tubs like this are standardized and made by a lot of different companies. They fit two and a half and three. It'll fit two and a half tight and the three uh, just right, so it works in both of them. And he'll uh, customize them for any size tub. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I am rinsing out. I'm going to do two rinses because I made coffee, and I want to get that strong coffee flavor out. No refrigeration. If you're going to... Hmm? Question for you. If you use that uh, great divide, would that count as two flavors in one bowl? Oh, clever. Clever. Double the price. I like your thinking. I like that thinking. Charge twice as much for two flavors. Not twice. He says that because, of course, he went through uh, my class the last couple of days, and in my store, there is no combining flavors. You can't get two flavors in one bowl. Why? Slow down the line. It slows down the line, uh, which is every night, and also it, it creates a flavor that you really didn't make. I'm real particular on the ice cream, and you will be too. When you put your heart and soul into these flavors that you create and the, the methods that you make in the ice cream, and then you, you see the results of it, you don't want them putting anything else in the bowl. I don't even have toppings in my ice cream store. You can't get banana splits and hot fudge sundaes and all that. What you get is great, unbelievably great ice cream, one flavor, in a cup. That's it. That's what you get. Okay? Okay? One more. One more what? I'm just doing two rinses. So you want me to wait? Yeah. I know you can fill the time. Okay. Uh, I have uh, well over uh, 100 recipes that I've done in the last seven years. And uh, I, actually, I even, uh, shameless plug time. Go ahead. I even sell a book, which you all know this already, right, online? I sell a book of the top 20 or 21 
great recipes that ran my business for lo these many years. And it, it, oh, it is available right here. <laughs> Unbelievable, what a coincidence, unbelievable how these things happen. So it is available at a discount because you're here and I don't have to ship it. Uh, so uh, you can certainly get those. Anyway, keep your recipes on little cards. It, it works out good. And when you're creating a recipe, uh, write down, we go over that in, in class, how to create a recipe. You know, let's say you want uh, uh, peach, pineapple, mango, sorbet. Well, you get your ingredients and then you work on how to create it, which uh, I show you. But anyway, when you finally come to it, put it on cards and then you've got a file box and we laminate them in the store so that they're, uh, you don't get peach, pineapple, mango <laughs> sauce all over your, your cards. And that's it. And then through the, through the times you'll make it, you're going to alter it. It's inevitable. You may decide to make uh, pineapple, mango, orange chip ice cream, and you may decide to add white chips to it. So you'll throw that down on your card, uh, and you'll always have a record of what's going on. Uh, in my book, and also on my cards, I, since I started with a small machine, uh, which worked great, this ran my business for a year and a half. It got me off the ground. It was, it was essential. So I have the formulas for the small machines as well as my new large machine. Uh, okay, so I thought we'd start spring off with a flavor that is wildly popular through the summer at my store. It's key lime pie. Uh, that's a good one, right? Key lime pie, you're in favor of that. Okay. Uh, so key lime pie, and as I said, I have the formulas for all the different machines. I'm going to work on this one, right? Yep. So this is a 12-quart machine. In the, in the small machine, in the 6-quart uh you might use uh, three quarts of mix, plus all your ingredients to come out with your product, especially something like key lime, which tends to expand because of the ingredients. In the 24 quart machine, it's a great formula because one whole bladder, 10 quarts, creates a batch of ice cream. So there's no measuring or anything. It's a, it's a perfect machine. Uh, not that I'm selling his machines, he'll do that. But it's just how I work. But today, since I'm using this, we're going to use five quarts of mix, which in my world is a half batch. So five quarts of mix. Is there five left in here? Yeah. Okay. Well, while Jeff's measuring that out, a quick story about his book. My wife uh, from, is from New York, and she went to Pace University, uh, where they teach you uh, fair jumping and uh, turnstile hopping and all sorts of great things. <laughs> and uh, I teach at Penn State once a year. And every time I come back, I bring back Paula some memorabilia from uh, Penn State. And so she has it all over her desk. And people come in, they see the Penn State, and they go, oh, you went to Penn State. And she goes, it's a great place, isn't it? You know, never admitting that she didn't go there. Well, uh, I bring ice cream over to a very tough crowd, my in-laws over in Palm Beach, really tough crowd. And they are complimenting. I was over there last weekend. And I had the, uh, the Mounds candy bar ice cream and the Heath candy bar ice cream. And they said, Steve, this is the best ice cream you've ever made. And Jeff made it. So my answer about this being the best ice cream I've ever made, I said, it really is good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Always take credit when you can. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Th this recipe is in the book, but if you don't have the book and you're really too embarrassed to pay me for it today, then you can simply write it down. Uh, uh, 35 quarts of mix is what we start with. That doesn't sound right. Well, they're not buying the book. <laughs> Didn't you get that? <laughs> no, I didn't. I fell for it. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All right. I think I'll go sit down in the wounded chair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Five quarts of mix. Uh, 18 ounces of sugar, which uh, even you know is what? 18 ounces of sugar. Glazed look on the sun. It's one pound, two ounces of sugar, right? Right, one pound, two ounces. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to let the machine mix the sugar in for me. Uh, because there's no water in this, and, and rather than mix this in a bowl, which is the same thing, 
I'm going to turn the machine on and let the machine dilute and mix the sugar into the mix. So uh, that'll save, save another step. Still not putting the refrigeration on because what we want to do, this is acting as a food processor right now. Uh, and I don't know about the other machines. I know you can't do, do this, but everything goes in. So whatever ice cream you can possibly think of, nuts, cookies, uh, sugar, chips, uh, chunks of chocolate, whatever you want, right in the hopper, and out comes great ice cream. So we're going to slowly add the sugars, give it a time to process. Now, the manufacturer doesn't recommend this process. <laughs> but that's OK. But it makes sense, doesn't it? Because you're spinning at 175 RPMs or whatever, 200 RPMs, so it's doing the same thing. And the blades are made of such a hard composite, it's not roughing them up or anything. It, it, I know he doesn't recommend it, but it works. <laughs> uh, key lime pie filling, which you could just eat this out of the can, it's so good. Uh, mm. We'll put this in. Now, I actually, let me show you something. OK, you don't mind. Go with anything okay. you want. OK. I'm going to take out some mix out of the machine to show you a great trick for blending everything, which we could have done with the sugar also, but we'll do it with this right now. We know we're going to need two cans of this, so for a second, pretend that we didn't put the mix in the machine, and it's in the bucket. Part of it's in the bucket. So we'll simply add this, two cans of key lime pie filling. And of course, your imaginations are running wild. You can do strawberry pie filling. You can do kiwi pie filling. Or How many people like kiwis? No, you don't really like them. <laughs> kiwis. A hairy brown fruit, right? <laughs> You know, I, I profess that there's three reasons we get into this business. Siri's calling me. <laughs> I think she's telling you to move it along. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just so much, it's just so much fun, though. Uh, what was I just saying? The three reasons we get into this business. Uh, profit, obviously. There's enormous profit in this stuff. But uh, the second one is art. We get to create. It, you get to create stuff, anything you want. And if the customer doesn't like it, so be it. You're the boss. And the third is, what's the third? See how much he's absorbed in two days? Hold on, I got to the, <laughs> the third is, fun. is fun. It's fun. This is a fun business. You get to be like a mad scientist in the, uh, in the business here, in creating all this stuff. How much of this? Uh, 12 ounces of lime juice. I usually use Key West lime juice because I'm a snob. 12 ounces. 12 ounces. Seems like a lot, doesn't it? You know, Jeff, on that aspect of having fun, the Italians don't do tapes like we do, but they once in a while what? you'll... The Italians don't do tapes like we do, but if you see one once in a while, the guy's all dressed up. He's got a, some kind of spectrograph thing. They're never smiling. They're not having fun. Oh. They're scientists. The best part of my day is making ice cream. Uh, after that, you've got to deal with customers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to mix this up, you can use the whisk. And this one wouldn't be too bad with a whisk, but there are some you can imagine. I mean, Reese's peanut butter cups and uh, Nutella and all that stuff, you know, you break your arm. So a friend of mine said, why not use a paint thinner, uh, a $3 paint thinner at Home Depot? So First, we're going to sterilize the paint thinner. And now, we're ready to roll. And this does it in no time, and it's fun. <laughs> and while you're making ice cream, you can also hang drywall. <laughs> fun.
And if you think about it, if we did this first, the sugar, which you recommend that, you know, doing it prior. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and there we are, like, you know, 20 seconds and we're good to go. And you get to lick this. I won't do it here, of course. <laughs> and that's it. In she goes. And I always turn it on to get things rolling. So how many ingredients was that? Four. Four ingredients. Mix, sugar, key lime pie filling, and lime juice. It doesn't get any simpler, and they're, by the way, my, okay, hang on, hang on. Don't, don't go anywhere. Uh, well, I'm just gonna get the rest of this in there. My whole philosophy is to buy your ingredients in the supermarket or ethnic markets. Wherever you see foods, that's where I shop. That's why my ice creams taste like stuff you remember and you, you've had to eat rather than... Uh, like what I'm going to make next. <laughs> <laughs> well, rather than uh, bottles and jars, and it says it on the cover of my book, rather than bottles and jars of colorings and chemicals and additives and food flavorings, I don't use those. Uh, I prefer real world food. When I'm going down the supermarket, we're gonna put the refrigeration on now. When I'm going down the supermarket aisle or any market aisles, uh, I look for anything that will spike my sweet tooth. Uh, cookies, cakes, pies, candies, uh, jellos, anything with any flavors. And uh, all my ice creams are made with stuff you find in the supermarket. Wake up. <laughs> you should have served caffeinated. I should, here. next time, next time. We'll okay. really juice them. Any questions about it? Uh, yes. Which setting are you using? Which what? Setting on the machine. Uh, homemade ice cream, 234 RPMs. That's the maximum. That's the max. Full speed ahead on my ice cream. He may wimp out on lower speeds. I go for the gusto in my ice cream. So that's more air. Yes. Nobody ever walked out of an ice cream parlor saying that's the best damn air content I ever ate. <laughs> they don't say, wow, I'm going back there. I just love that fat. They eat flavor. That's the most important thing in ice cream is flavor. Yes, sir. What are the settings? Oh, there's five, six settings on there, right? Oh, I think there's 10. 10. Uh, plus, it's 10. also manual. So you have uh, homemade, let me think if I remember them. Homemade, super premium, um, gelato, frozen custard, Italian ice, sorbet, sorbetto, uh, frozen yogurt, uh, sherbet. Uh, I think there may be one other one. And then it is variable, so uh, you can also just push it up and down to whatever your personal preference is. So it's, it's completely automated, but at the same time, it's also, it's, it's, also, it's automated based on what I wanted. Uh, and uh, I've been making bad ice cream for over 42 years. And, um, but you can also manually adjust it to anything that you want, too. Uh, some people will use a slow speed uh, or a high speed just to mix ingredients, and then they'll slow it down when they start freezing it. And then what I do sometimes, if I'm at a low speed like gelato, uh, I'll push the up arrow as the ice cream's coming out, the gelato's coming out, to just push it out faster. To me, it's all about speed. I want to get the job done and go off to the beach. And uh, the faster I can make the ice cream uh, and, and the better I can make it, that's my whole job today is to make the ice cream and then hit the beach. Metaphorically speaking. Okay. That's right. Okay. Any other questions about this? It's simple, actually. Yes, sir. What's the difference between the super premium and the homemade? 
Uh, Super Premium is going to be uh, a heavier air content ice cream. Um, homemade, you know, see the speeds don't mean anything. People always ask me because they're trying to compare our machine to some you know, Chinese junk and that is not gonna hold up. And uh, they say, well, what's your speed? Well, it doesn't matter because it has to do with the dasher and the size of the barrel and the depth of the barrel. So the actual number means nothing. So when Jeff says full speed, that means 100% overrun. When I'm doing super premium, I'm at about 65% overrun. When I'm doing uh, uh, haagen I'm at about 50% uh, overrun. When I'm doing uh, Italian I or uh, gelato, I'm at about 40% overrun. And they claim, and you gotta read what people say because the other companies lie, I don't. They say, oh, we make 20% uh, overrun. No, they make, uh, they make 40% overrun, which is 20% air. You know, overrun is double. Uh, think of it, if you're confused, especially people watching the tape, if you're confused about the term overrun, think about alcohol. If you buy a 100 proof rum, it's 50% alcohol in the bottle and 50% other stuff. So if I make a 100 proof ice cream, it's 50% air and 50% dairy product. Uh, but instead of calling it 100 proof ice cream, we call it 100% overrun ice cream. So you can, you can put proof and overrun are interchangeable terms in, in my mind. So it, it makes it a little clearer. So if you want a heavier, more dense ice cream, two things you got to remember. Uh, a scoop of Jeff's, Jeff's ice cream at four ounces, and he does bigger, uh, four ounces is falling off the cone. The same scoop of haagen is falling into the bottom third of the cone. It's so dense and so tight. And people look at it and you say, you just charged me four bucks for it doesn't even fill the cone? I feel cheated. I'm not coming back. And that's why haagen stores fail. You won't find a haagen store because it's a great product uh, when it's uh, in pints and you take it home uh, because you don't sit down and eat. Most people don't eat a lot of haagen -Dazs. You take a couple of spoonfuls when you first bring it home, don't you? And then you have some after dinner, and then if you're like me, 11 o'clock at night before you go to bed, I'm just gonna grab one more spoonful. You pick at haagen -Dazs. So it works out very well uh, that it's a heavy, dense ice cream. You gorge on mine. Excuse me? Yes, you, you yeah. gorge on yours. And uh, along the same line, always know what business you're in. I don't sell deep, I don't build deep fat fryers. Uh, I, I don't build DeLorean cars, though I could do either one of those uh, out of stainless steel. That's my specialty. Uh, I stick to batch freezers. You're in the frozen dessert business, so you should be sticking to frozen dessert products that people are going to enjoy and remember and want to come back. They come back to Jeff's place because it's a treat. Because uh, of me. And because of him. They, uh, it's a treat to go out to Jeff's place and, and get some uh, atomistic ice, ice cream and, uh, and get some, uh, I'll be right with it, and, and to get a special treat. what I do? Nothing. I just tasted the ice cream and I went, wow. Oh, good. Now, try not to eat too much of it. I want to give it out to my cardiologist and my back doctor. <laughs> Different story. Uh, but you, you want a product that is going to be memorable. If I tick off the top names... Uh, in ice cream. It's going to be places like Buy Right Creamery uh, in San Francisco. It's going to be Ample Hills in uh, Brooklyn. It's um, going to be the Freeze down on uh, South Beach in Miami. And it's going to be Jeff's Place. These are all places that are making a good eating ice cream. They all have the infinite overrun, but they're not producing a heavy, heavy ice cream because they know the customer really doesn't like it. In your mind, you're thinking like, uh, you know, the nightclub Texas, you know, too much is never enough. Well, guess what? Sometimes too much is too much. And if it's too dense, too fatty, it, it's, it's just not going to be good. You've got to, I, I tell people that um, if I hand you a pale pink ice cream and you say, oh, that's delicious, what is it? I, I just failed as an ice cream maker because you can't tell me what it is. You can't tell that it's red raspberry instead of strawberry. So what's the fault? Not enough flavor. When you taste this, you're going to know what it is. Amen. Amen. So what would Haagen-Dazs <laughs> use as a setting on this machine? To get that down? They would use my uh, super premium uh, setting. Oh, no, no, excuse me. They would use uh, gelato. And you had a question. Yeah, if you were running out of sexes, what would that concept? And my parents would be using the 
ice cream. I heard the first part. Tex uh, if you were making ice cream in Texas, what would you run? In fact, the Emory Thompson, uh, hey, Jack? Yes, sir. Is uh, Ken on the line? Is he watching today? Yes, he is watching. Ken is our IT division in Magnolia, Texas. What? Uh, we're kind yeah, of spread man. out around the country. And um, in Texas, I would probably run a 12 or a 14%. Uh, you have um, Plano, Texas. You have uh, a great ice cream parlor. You have Amy's in Austin and all around. They're not running high fat uh, because it's too hot. It's not as bad as here because we have the heat and yeah. the humidity, which makes things worse. How is it? I gotta grab a spoon and try it. It's uh, excellent. It really is delicious. Is this for both of you? Yeah. Oh. It tastes just like a key lime pie, only better. That was small. No. Move on. <laughs> you want some both flavors in there? No, no. <laughs> Always a wise guy. <laughs> Oh, uh, you can turn that. I, I wanted to get the last for the girls to store it. So how is that ice cream? That was homemade. Yes. Yeah. And again, the flavor is going to enhance, and the, the body and the coldness of it, especially the coldness, is going to change dramatically. <laughs> How come you're not eating any? Okay. Oh, another one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to hand it to Jeff. He's a hopeless liberal, but he makes great ice cream. Oh, yeah. Ah, even he comes in. Everybody, this is Jack. He's, uh, he's our cameraman, and he also assembles the biggest machines, the 44s and the 24s.